We're gonna go step-by-step step through setting up the Rodecaster video for live streaming and recording, including basic camera switching, creating custom layouts, and mixing your audio. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. First, I wanna thank Rode for sending me the Rodecaster video to share with you on this channel. So first, we're gonna quickly go over the inputs and outputs on the device, and then we'll dive into setting it up. There's an awful lot of ports on the back, so let's quickly go over what they all are. There's four HDMI inputs, which means you can connect things like cameras or even a computer or an iPad in and bring that video into the switcher. There's two HDMI outs, which can be used to either monitor the multi-view, which is what you're seeing on the TV back there, or you can actually send a copy of your main program feed that you're switching out to another device, like an external recorder or a screen. Over on the other side, we've got audio. There are two combo XLR inputs. That means you can connect things like instruments or even XLR microphones into these. There are two quarter inch headphone jacks and there's a left and right analog output that you can use to run into a speaker in a room. Over on the very far end next to the power button, there's a USB-C port. That is just for powering the device. Next to that is an ethernet jack. That's to give it a wired network connection, but there is also built-in Wi-Fi. Above that is a micro SD card slot, which we'll use to add in graphics. And then there's the five USB-C ports. That's a lot of USB-C ports and they actually all serve a slightly different purpose. Ports one and two are for your computer. Port one will bring in the video to your computer. Port two is only for audio or settings. Port three is where you can plug in a hard drive if you want to record from the Rodecaster video onto an external drive. And then ports four and five are for either microphones or webcams. So you can bring in a USB-C microphone into the Rodecaster, or you can bring in video from a USB-C webcam or any device that is also a UVC capture card. So that's it on the back. Let's move to the top of the device. The top of the device is the main interface you'll use while interacting with this. The main row of buttons down here are your camera switching buttons. So this will just switch between the different camera angles that you've plugged in. I'll show you the rest of these buttons as we start to actually go and configure the device. So of course, first thing you're gonna wanna do is connect all your video sources that you're gonna be using. So that could be one or two cameras. It could also be an iPad if you wanna bring in graphics or presentation. And you can also connect webcams in case you have some USB-C webcams you wanna use as well. Once you have your video sources connected, you'll see little thumbnails on the multi-view here. Right now I've got four different HDMI cameras connected into here. And now that those are connected, I can already do basic camera switching. So I just push button one that corresponds to camera one. I can quickly cut between the four different video sources that are plugged in. Great, now before we get any farther, there is one really important setting you'll need to change, and that's the global frame rate. So for this, I'm gonna show you how to navigate this menu system. This is actually a touch screen, and then this will also help you navigate the touch screen. So if you tap on settings, then you can actually now scroll through the different options. So I'm gonna first go to the video menu. I'm gonna press down on this to select, and I'm gonna scroll it over to frame rate. You can also tap these, but I find it easier to use the wheel to navigate. Once frame rate is selected, I'll tap down, and this is where you choose the global frame rate of the device. So this is where you can choose whether you want it to be a fractional frame rate, 24, 30, 50, 60. So choose the frame rate that you're gonna use for all your productions and then press okay. I like keeping mine in at 30 frames a second as a whole frame rate, but it's totally up to you. The device will have to go and reset itself and it'll lose any of your saved graphics or things like that if you do change it. So now that the frame rate is selected, we're ready to go and set everything else up. So we can already do our basic camera switching with the four buttons on the top. And before we get into some of the more fancier video features, I actually wanna move over to audio because this is actually a full audio mixer as well and it's actually really powerful. So first you'll need to decide where you're gonna bring audio from for your stream. That could be an XLR microphone, it could be one of the Rode wireless microphones. You can also bring in your audio from your HDMI cameras if you have microphones connected to the cameras. There's also audio sources from the built-in video clips that you can load in. So you'll need to decide where your audio is coming from and then we're gonna go configure the audio channels. So back to the top of the device, we're gonna tap on this icon, which is the audio menu. I'm actually gonna now scroll to the left and that's where we can go into the channel configuration. So I'm gonna press down here and now we can choose which channels do we actually want to be brought in to this device so that we can mix the audio. You can bring in audio from lots of different sources. You can see there's USB sources, there's Bluetooth, there's, there's all sorts of things here. So where are we gonna bring audio from? Well, we've got the two combo jacks on the back, so I can leave one of those on. We've got a wireless one and wireless two. You can actually connect and pair two different wireless mics. So I'll leave one of those connected. You can choose whether you want your sound coming in from any of your four HDMI cameras. So I'll turn one of those on so we can see it. And then there's also Bluetooth, which you can actually use to pair a Bluetooth device. You can pair your phone to the Rodecaster video and your phone will just see it as an external Bluetooth audio interface. Then there's also the USBs. So USB 1, USB 1 chat, 2, 4, and 5. So if the Rodecaster is plugged into your computer over USB 1 or USB 2, then you can bring in audio from your computer 
into these channels. I'm gonna turn these off because I'm not gonna use these now. USBs four and five are the two extra USB ports that you can use to plug in microphones. So that could be a Rode USB microphone, and it can even be a full-on external audio mixer like the Rodecaster Duo. I'll turn on one of these so we can play with that as well. So now that you've chosen which channels that you want to bring the audio in, I'm just gonna go ahead and press home, and I'll show you what I see on the screen here. So on the screen here, these are the channels I've chosen in that first audio mix. Now I've actually got the option of mixing the audio from these. So again, back in the audio, this is where we can now change the levels for each of these. This is now a little bit easier to do in the software on the computer, so I'll show you that in a minute. But if you you can just scroll through the different sources that you've chosen, and when you get to one that, that you wanna adjust, you press down on that button, and the circle, this turns green, and now that icon, that little fader is green, and now you can actually adjust the audio level here. There's also a bunch of audio effects processing built into this. So if you tap on that icon, then you can actually go and change these between uh, the depth, the sparkle, and the punch sounds, uh, which are basically shortcuts for different EQ settings and things like that. Again, it's a little bit easier, easier to do this in the software on the computer in Rode Central, so we'll take a look at that more in a little bit. One of the other really important audio features is the audio delay. Now, this actually mostly just works and you mostly don't have to think about it. But the one thing you will need to do is set the delay first to make sure that it syncs up with your video cameras. Every HDMI camera will have a different amount of delay that that video feed is sent out. And if you're mixing your video from an HDMI camera with audio from a different source, like a microphone, you're gonna need to delay the audio to match the video. So if we go into the settings here and then scroll over to the audio delay menu, tap that, you can see here I've got it set for six frames. Now I did a little bit of experimenting to find that this was actually the amount of delay I wanted. And I'll show you how to do that because this is really important to get this right. It's kind of tricky to figure out what the right amount of delay is. If you already know it for your camera, then great. You can, you can set it in frames or you can actually set it in milliseconds. So how do you find out what the right amount of delay is? It's a little bit tricky, but let me try to show you here. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the audio from the HDMI camera next to the audio from a microphone. And then we can actually listen to both and we can adjust that delay until they line up. The trick is that you'll need to be listening to a version of the audio that actually shows you the delay. And this is where one of the features of the Rodecaster actually kind of gets in the way of this. Like I said, it mostly just works once it's configured and you don't have to think about it, which is great, but actually getting it configured is a bit of a trick. So I'm gonna first turn on audio from the HDMI camera that I'm using to film this. So back in the audio menu, we're gonna bring, we're gonna make sure HDMI one is on. Now this audio from the camera is in sync because the audio channel already matches with the video coming out of the camera. This is already delayed. So that's great. Now we need a source of audio that doesn't have delay. So for that, I can use, for example, a wireless microphone. So let's go and scroll over here to wireless one, tap on settings, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pair this with the microphone. So I'll tap to pair, turn this microphone on. And if I tap the pair button, it should sync up. Great. So now we have another source of audio here, which is not going to be delayed. So next, let's take a look at the multi-view. And this is what I'm gonna want you to keep a very close eye on. So notice at the bottom, we have two sources of audio under wireless and HDMI one. I mentioned that the HDMI one audio is already delayed because it's coming straight out of the camera. And if you look at the levels, you can see they're actually bouncing at different times. So if I snap my fingers, you'll see a snap first in the, the audio meter for the wireless will go up. And then shortly after the HDMI meter will go up. Great, so now we can visually see the delay. It's a little bit tricky to actually get this to, to work by monitoring the audio, so we can actually do this entire thing visually. So watch the live audio meter when I snap my fingers. Did you see how it pulsed twice? That's because the audio is not delayed yet, so it's actually getting two copies of it and there's a delay between them. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the audio delay until we don't see that pulsing twice and we just see one. You can kind of do it visually, but it's a lot easier to tell when you've got it right if you can listen to it also. The trick is that the headphone output actually doesn't show you the delay because that's what you want. You don't want the headphone output to have a delay. However, the analog line outputs do pass through the delay. So if you have the ability to run the analog output into speakers in the room, you can actually do this by listening. So I do have speakers in the room and you might be hearing a bit of an echo right now because I've got them turned up. So I'm gonna do this by listening. I'm going to snap my fingers and I'm gonna hear two snaps. So I can hear two clicks, so I'm gonna adjust the delay and then try again. I'm gonna adjust it to four, which I know is not quite right, but when we listen to it, it should get a lot closer. Now I can hear that's a lot closer. So now I'll adjust it to six, and now when I snap, 
I only hear one click. It's actually just a hair off, so I could actually go a little bit further and try to adjust it in milliseconds instead. So that looks like it's right. 210 milliseconds gets me pretty much only hearing one click. So if we go back and look at the multi-view here, now when I snap my fingers, you should see only one pulse in that live audio meter. Perfect. Now the audio is in sync. Once that's set and you know what it is for your cameras, you won't have to think about this ever again. Let me explain what I mean. So what the Rodecaster does internally is it's actually adding a delay to the any of the analog inputs, and that way it'll match with any audio you're mixing from your HDMI. The trick is that if you are listening to yourself with headphones, you don't want to hear that delay because it's really awkward to hear yourself on a delay. So the headphone audio mix actually doesn't include the delay and you just hear a pass through of any of the analog microphones. So it'll sound great and you can actually use this without really thinking about it and the headphone mix will be right, but it'll still be delayed to match in the recording and the stream. The monitor output by default does have the delay because it's actually set to the live audio mix, but you can change that if you want. If you need the audio in the room to also not have a delay on any microphones, you can change it. To do that, we'll need to go into Rode Central on the computer. If you've got Rode Central on your computer and then the device is plugged in over USB or on your network, you'll be able to actually control it through, through this interface. Click on the Rodecaster video and then you've got a couple of different options here. I'm gonna first go into the audio mixer since that's what we're talking about right now. This is where you get to adjust all of the different options for the audio mix. So here is where you get to choose what sources and what levels you want all of your different audio sources for each of the outputs listed here. Live mix is kind of the default mix. I mentioned that there's two headphone jacks, so you get two different headphone mixes you can create. Monitor is the one I wanna show you right now. So this is the analog outputs on the back of the device. Monitor by default is set to live mix, which will be the post delay version of any of your audio. So this is actually what's going out to the stream. However, if I click custom, then this actually removes the delay from the output of any of the analog mics. So now the wireless microphone is not delayed on the analog output. And that way, if you're using it to amplify a speaker in a room, they're not gonna hear a delay on the in-room speakers. They're gonna hear exactly what's happening on the microphone as soon as it, it comes into the device. So if you just change it to custom, you can leave all the levels the same, but this way now your analog out is not delayed. Other than this setting, you really don't need to think about the delay after you've set it once, because like I said, it mostly just works. Your headphone outputs will never have the audio delay applied to it, and that way you always hear your microphones in real time. Okay, so far we've got our basic video inputs set up and also our audio channels configured. Next, I wanna talk about adding graphics. So again, we're gonna to need to go back into Rode Central to do this because we're gonna add graphics from the computer. So I'll go back to Rode Central here and for this, I'm gonna click on the Scene Builder. So I've already plugged in a micro SD card to the back of this and that's where the graphics will be stored. But we can now use this interface to upload media to that SD card. I've got some graphics in here that are from Lily's live stream because she actually has more graphics in here than I usually use. So for example, there's a little banner here that advertises for her forum, and I can actually now just go drag this in. It's gonna upload to the SD card, and then it'll show me a little preview here in a second. We're gonna go add a few other graphics as well. We're gonna add the background that's 1920 by 1080, so we can just drag this in. We can also add this one, which is another little lower third, and you can even add video clips. So if I have a video clip here that's H664, I can drag that in, and that will go ahead and add the video clip there. So now that the graphics are loaded into this media library, we can assign them to buttons. This brings me to another thing I need to point out about how the Rodecaster video interface works. Let's go back to the overhead shot here so I can show you. These are the camera switching buttons, and then these are multi-purpose buttons. You can see how they're letters, and they right now they're all not lit up because they don't do anything out of the box. Once we have scenes created, these will correspond to scenes, but these will also change what they do based on which of these buttons you've pressed. This top button is for media. The next button is for overlays. This is where we can set up multi-source picture in picture, and this is where we set up keying. So when this button is pressed and we're in media mode, these top buttons now correspond to different media that are loaded. And that is also true with overlays. Once we've got overlays created, we can get to them from this row of buttons. So let me go back into the software and I'll show you how we can do this. Here, we're going to press the media button here. And now that that's selected, these letters now correspond to media slots rather than layouts. So now I can go ahead and drag images into the media. I'm gonna put the background in G and I'm gonna put this video clip in A. Now you can see how these turned pink here and the buttons are also pink here. Now I've got media loaded in slot G and A. And on the multi-view, you can see that there's a preview of those graphics now there also. So with the media button not pressed, we've got a bunch of empty slots through A through G and if I press the media button now, you can see it's 
loading in the graphics and these change to the media buttons. So now I can bring that on air by pressing that, which is not super interesting because it's just a background graphic. We're going to use that in layouts later, but button A is a video clip and it'll actually play that video clip when I press it. So that is the media slots. Let's now go and do the same thing for overlays. So I'll press on the second button, which is the overlays. And this is where we can add these little banners that are going to be lower thirds. These images actually have a transparent background. So when I add them here, it'll work exactly like you want it to work and it will be an overlay. So if I'm on camera one and then I've pressed this overlay button, you can see the banner is in uh, slot A. I can now press that and it'll show up on the screen on top of the video. Let's go add the other graphics as well. We'll add that one. Let's go add this other uh, starting soon as well. So I'll drag that into the media library and then I will drag it onto button C. So now I've got three graphic overlays loaded and three media loaded, which are uh, full screen, not transparent. If you have graphics that are not 1920 by 1080 like this one, this will work as well. If I, I can see here that it's 1032 by 505, I'll go ahead and just drag it into slot D and we can actually now do some adjustments to it. So if I click on this, you can see it actually already just scale it up and centered it, which is fine. But we also have the ability to adjust the size and position here. So if I want to use this as a little corner bug, for example, I can scale it down and drag it into the corner. And now the device is actually scaling it and that's what's loaded in slot D. So if you go back to the multi view, you can see that slot D now shows us that it's actually scaled down in the corner in the preview and it'll bring it on the air small as well. So to bring these graphics on the air, I'm pressing the little graphic overlay button. And then I can see that I have four graphics loaded here. It's also showing me them in the screen and then I can press any of them to bring them on air. There is a limit, which is only one can be on air at a time. So it'll take the other one off the air if you are changing it around like this. If you have a graphic on the air and you go back out of this menu, this actually turns pink, showing you that there is some, some something on air here. So pink is the color they use to indicate on air. And I can see that there's some overlay on right now. And if I press that, it'll then show me which one is on. And I can see that it's D. So then I can turn it off by pressing D again. And then it turns blue. And now when I get out of this menu, that is no longer pink. So already you can see I can do quite a lot with this with the switcher. I've got basic camera switching. I've got video clips I can play and I can also add graphics and logos and lower thirds on top of the stream as well. Now I want to talk about layouts and this is where this device is also super powerful. So this top row of letters are blank by default because that's where your layouts will live. So let's go create a layout. I'm going to go into the layout button, which is this little button with a rectangle in the corner and it's called multi-source. By default, it's going to give us this picture in picture option, but you can also choose a bunch of different preset layouts. If you tap on it, it'll go into this menu, which will show you a little preview of what kind of layout you're going to create. Picture in picture is a default. We can either tap on the arrows or use the wheel. I like to use the wheel a little better. So we've got picture in picture layouts side by side. We've got three side by side. You can even do a four up grid, or you can do these sort of next to each other options or three or even four sources on the screen. So it's really powerful. You can, you have a lot of different options and these are just the presets. So let's first do a picture in picture. Let's say it's, we'll do this one. Once you've chosen the template, you now choose your video sources. So you can see that one of these boxes is yellow. That's what is uh, being selected right now. So if I scroll up to the box A, we can see that box A has camera one. So if I wanted to show a different camera, I could tap camera three, for example. Let's let's go ahead and actually do the overhead camera, which is camera two. And then in box B, I'll scroll down in the wheel there. In box B, I'm going to use camera one, which is my main camera angle. Now I've got two cameras selected. And if you actually look at the multi view, I can see the picture in picture is created there. So let's go ahead and click on the checkbox scene created, hold empty scene to save. That's telling you what to do now. So right now the scene is created, but I can never get back to it. I need to actually save it somewhere first. So I'm going to put this in uh, slot A. So if I press and hold, then it's actually going to save that in scene A. And you can see the thumbnail now shows me the picture in picture. On the multi view, I can see that there is now something in slot A and I can see a little preview of it up there. And that's actually showing me the sort of low frame rate version of the scene. So now, in addition to switching between different cameras down here, I can also switch between scenes. So I can go switch between any of these angles and then also show the picture in picture layout that I've created. And you can do up to seven of these scenes created. So let's create a couple more. Let's go and look at some of the other layouts like the side by side. So if I go into this, I'll press this button again, multi-source. And then if I tap on that, we can go scroll over to the side by side options. I kind of like this one where we might be using it for like, showing slides from a computer full screen and then a scaled down 
version of a person talking. So I'll check that. And then for box A, we're gonna use, let's say, yeah, camera two, that makes sense. That's my top-down camera. And then box B will be camera one. Now there's also a slot up here for the background. And this is because there's actually room in this for background. If you look at the multi-view, you can see that right now the background is black, which is not terribly interesting. So let's go ahead and select a background. So with the background highlighted in yellow, I can now actually either use a video source as a background, which is maybe weird for what I'm doing now, but I can also press on the media slot here and select G, which is where that background graphic lives. And when I do this, and now this background is the fun branded background. So now we can go ahead and click on the checkbox. And because I actually had done this with A selected, it's actually overwritten the scene in scene A. If I want to make a new scene, I'll need to actually go out of scene A first in order to create a new layout. So this is another good chance for me to show you another feature here, which is moving scenes around. If I tap on this eyeball, this is called the inspect button. If I tap on that, then it actually gives me, uh, I, can, I can inspect these different buttons and I'm gonna press A here. And it's telling me what this is. It's telling me it's scene A and it's a template. I can tap on the little three things and move it. And then I can actually move it over to, for example, button B. So I can get out of that menu with that. And now let's go and recreate our scene A as the side-by-side -side layout. So I'll press this again, multi-source. We're gonna go scroll over to this picture in picture. I'm gonna select camera two for box A and camera one for box B. Check that, scene created, hold empty scene to save. So I'll press and hold A. And now you can see in the multi-view that I've got two scenes created. Okay, let's do it one more time and check out some of the other scenes as well. So I'll get out of the scene, that way we don't overwrite it again accidentally. And then I'll go and press the picture and picture button again, multi-source. And let's go check out one of these more complicated ones. Like let's get all of my cameras in at the same time. So I'll tap that. And now I've got, let's select a background. So I, let's say I am gonna use the branded background again. So with that yellow, I can push the media slot, press G to select the tiled background, which you can see in the preview here, that's G. Great, that changed the background. Now let's go back to uh, here and it's, it's actually already auto selected camera or box A, it moved it down because after I made that selection. So what do we want in A? That's the big box. Let's do the overhead camera for that one. And then box B is the top one. So we'll put my face up there. C is gonna be three and then D will be four. And you can see what it's doing here is as I'm choosing camera four, it's gonna add that box there. And with this, I'm gonna press the little checkbox and then hold for two seconds on C. And now it's saved that scene there. So now I've got a pretty powerful set of options here. I can cut between the different cameras. I can go to the picture in picture. I can go back to this wide angle. I can also now go to this side by side or bring in even four boxes. So these are the presets. And as you can see, there was a bunch of different options for presets. There's these different picture in picture layouts. There's these side by side, either scaled up or shrunk down. You can do three side by side, you can do four up. There's also these next to each other versions and these multi three and four box templates. But this isn't actually the end of the story. If you go into the software, you actually get even more flexibility. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so I'm gonna actually press on D, which is an empty slot, and I can just say custom here. And this is gonna let me create a completely custom layout. So let's say I like something about the, let's say I kind of like the side by side, but I want my face to be larger. I want my face to be scaled up and I don't need to use as much of the sides of this image, right? I want to make it crop like this. So that, that's what we can use this custom option for. So with this uh, scene, D is now a custom scene. We can start adding layers to it. So I'll click on, on this and we've got now these different layers to, to select. So let's first go ahead and add a background. I'm gonna go and select the media option here. I'm gonna drag my red, green, and blue graphic to slot F. So now it's loaded into one of the graphic slots so I can actually use it in layouts. So let's get out of that, make sure we're in scene D. And now when I click on this bottom layer, I can change it to one of the media that's loaded and I'll make it my RGB background. Now we can add a camera on top. So let's go and choose this one will be camera one, two, three, or four. Let's use camera two, which is the overhead slot shot. This is, we're gonna actually now scale down. So I can just grab the corner and scale it down. So that looks too big. We would need room for my face next to it. So I'll go a little bit farther, maybe like that. Try to center it. Great. We'll add a new layer on top, which is going to be my main camera. That's camera one. And I'm gonna scale this down 
and then also crop it. Let's see. Camera two, we can see the dimensions of it here. Height is 772. So I actually want this to be the same height. So let's just go until we get to 772. And then we are going to start cropping. So I'm going to drag that in from that side, drag that in from that side, and then scoot it over here so that we can get it uh, next to the other camera. And it's at Y150. Let's make sure this one's also at 150 so that they line up. So now we've got this nice side by side where my face is actually now uh, cropped in on the sides because we didn't need the whole thing. Uh, you can also see that we have a layering order we can select. So camera one's on top and it's actually covering up a bit of the edge of that. So if I want to make sure that I could see the full 16 by nine aspect ratio of the thing on the bottom, I could drag camera one down below. And that way now this is the full 16 by nine of whatever is in that camera. So this is now saved as scene D and I can also see that it's saved as scene D here. I can see that I've got a little preview of it and that's what's on the program. And now I can switch away from it and get back to it like that. So now that we've got our graphics, our backgrounds, our custom layouts and our overlays all created, we're ready to actually start recording and streaming. For this, you'll wanna grab a USB SSD. So I have a Samsung T7, it seems to be working fine for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this into that USB 3. Once you plug it in, it'll recognize the drive and then the USB disk light will turn green and the record button will turn green. The drive does need to be formatted in XFAT, but that's about it. So now that that's plugged in, you can also see on the multi-view that the record uh, box is lit up and says how much storage is available. It's actually showing me that it's got 176 hours available, which is plenty. But there's one really important setting that I wanna show you here and that is ISO recording. So let's tap on the settings icon and then scroll to multi-track. I'll press down here. So for record video, we can actually choose whether we want to record only the program feed or also the ISO feed. So if I tap into that, I can choose program or ISO. Program means it's gonna record only one file, which is whatever is the main thing on the screen. So whatever is in this box is what's recorded. If you choose ISO, then it'll actually record all of the video sources independently. And that way you can mix it again later. So I like that option because it means it's really flexible. You get to, you get a, a backup copy of all of your inputs at the same time. So we're gonna leave that selected. Do note that if I choose program though, the number of hours just jumped up to 4,100, which is incredible. But if I choose ISO, it goes down to 176, which makes sense. There's also an ISO setting for audio. So let's go to, if I go back to the settings here, go to multi-track, and then I scroll to the right here, we've got audio options as well. So multi-track audio, I can either turn that on or off by just tapping that. And if you do want multi-track audio recorded, you can choose whether you want it to be pre-fader, bypass all the effects, or post-fader. Pre-fader is the safe option. Basically, it means it's recording the raw audio that's coming in on all the sources. If you did post-fader, it's gonna record at the volume that they're set in the device, which means some of them might be not recorded. You can also bypass the effects. I'm going to go ahead and do pre-fader because that's like the earliest in the process. And that way, if I make any mistakes in the mix, I can always recover it from the recordings later. So now that's configured, recording is just a matter of pressing the big giant button in the corner. The button turns red, the record light turns red here, and we can see it's counting up. It's also showing it's recording on the multi-view. So let's record that for a couple of seconds and I'll bring the drive into the computer and show you the files that it's created. So here's the USB drive on the computer. And if I go into the Rodecaster video folder, here is the folder it just created for that, for that recording. So here we can see we've got a folder, which is uh, the program video, which is just the one video track of whatever was your main, including all your, your camera cuts and your, your audio mix. That's basically what was what would also go out on the stream. But then in the video and audio folders, we've got all of the ISO files. So here we've got cameras one, two, three, four, five, and six. Five and six don't actually have uh, any sources plugged in right now because I don't have any USB cameras plugged in, so those are just you know empty. But I do have cameras one, two, three, and four. So if I show you the recordings of these, we can see that it did actually record all four different camera angles. Same thing is true with the audio. The audio folder contains files for each audio source that was checked. So we've got you know the combo of video clips, Bluetooth, wireless, HDMI, USB, and a separate audio, which is the live mix. Again, this corresponds with the audio sources that I've turned on in the Rodecaster at the beginning of the video. So if you didn't have combo two turned on in your Rodecaster, it's not gonna record a file for that audio source. And lastly, we should talk about streaming. So the drive light is green when I plug in a drive, but you can see that this light is not green because there is no stream configured. Now this we need to do in Rode Central also. So I'll come back to my computer here. I'm gonna close out of this though and go into back into the main menu and go to this stream profiles. 
Stream profiles is where you get to create your different configurations. So this is where you can create different profiles for whether you want to stream to YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever. So I'll add a profile here. We can call it Aaron's YouTube. And this is where I enter the server and the stream key. So let me go to YouTube really quick and grab the settings. So here I've copied the server and then here I can copy the stream key and paste that in here, save that. And now I've got a profile created for Aaron's YouTube. So with this, you can see that it's checked. And now if I look at the multi view, I actually do see Aaron's YouTube now turned on uh, in that bottom right corner. I can see that that is configured and the stream light here is turned on also. To actually go live, I need to tap on this part of the screen here. And now I have a go live button. So we can see that the profile is selected. I can tap go live and start streaming and it's now pushing to YouTube. If I wanna stop, I can just tap it again and click stop. If you had different profiles created, you can choose them here. So once you've got it all set up from the Rode Central, you can actually change between different profiles on the device without going back into Rode Central. So if I go and create a new profile here, let's call it Lily's YouTube, and then I'll type in the, you, the server here and let's we'll just use the same stream key, pretending it's a different profile. I'll save that. Now I can see that there are two profiles created. So if I go back into the Rodecaster, I can tap on the profile there and I can change between the different profiles. So now this will stream when I start here, I can now go live to that profile. I did suggest to Rode that they make this button go live when you press it because right now it only records and it doesn't actually go live. You have to go here and actually tap this to go live. I personally think this button should just do both. If you have a stream configured, this button should also go live. So we'll see if they can do that in a firmware update. Let me know down in the comments if you think that makes more sense too. So that is your quick intro to the Rodecaster video. As you can probably tell, there's a lot more to this device that I did not go into in this video. So make sure you're subscribed because I will be posting a lot more videos about this device as I've had more of a chance to use it. Thanks again to Rode for sending out the Rodecaster for me to share with you. And of course, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.